Hi, my name is Jesse Anderson, and today I'd like to show you how HBase works using a deck of playing cards. Here, I hold this deck of playing cards. Let's imagine that this is a table. This is a table that occupies a petabyte of data on, on disk. And this is exactly how HBase stores its data. It stores it as a table. And each one of the pieces of data is stored as a column. For the sake of simplicity, we're going to say that each one of these cards is an individual row in HBase. What HBase does is, you remember that we were talking about how this table is a petabyte of data? and Well, instead of storing that in just one place as a, a, a petabyte of data, what it does is it splits it up. So here we have these pieces of paper. Each one of these pieces of paper represents a node within the cluster. So here's another node, here's one node, here's another node, and here's another node. What HBase does is it breaks up this table into parts called regions. Now these regions, in this case, we're going to say there's a clubs region, and there's a hearts region, and there's a clubs region, and then here's a diamonds region. So you'll notice that uh, here around our cluster the regions are being served up by different machines in the cluster. This one's empty. Let's say for the for example that this one's serving up other tables that, <clears throat> that are broken up in there. Now let's talk about how things are stored. One of the important things to know about HBase is it's stored in sorted order. That has some interesting implications as we'll talk about later on, but looking at this, we see that everything goes in numerical order. In this case, it's what's called lexicographic order, is how is the ordering that's used in HBase. And this will come up as, as we can do some interesting things. We're gonna talk about that in a second. So first of all, let's talk about what happens when we want to read data from HBase. Well, here I'm a client, and let's say I want to read a particular piece of information. Let's say I want to read the six of hearts. Well, the first thing I do as a client is I have to figure out which one of the nodes to talk to that's going to be serving up that particular region. So what I do is I look in, and there's, this, there's some ways that HBase does this, and it's all transparent to use the programmer. So what I have to do is I look up that data, and here, I find that hearts are being served in this particular node. Then I can go through and I can read, okay, here is the eight of hearts, for example. Well, there's some interesting things that can happen. You remember we were talking about sorted order? Well, let's talk about something. Let's say I wanted to read the eight of clubs, for example. So here, I'm the client. I go and find where clubs are. But one thing that HBase does that's different is instead of just having to go through all, all the way through everything, what it has are indexes. These indexes allow you to go further in and not have to read from the very beginning. So what HBase does in this case is it would start at six, let's say. So here we start at six, we start reading at six because that's where the index said would be the earliest place we can start reading. So we start at six, we read seven. Hey, there's no eight. Well, how do we know that? It's because we went from seven to nine with nothing in between. As a result of this lexicographic sorting, we're able to say this doesn't exist because there's nothing, there's nothing in between there. Everything is in sorted order. The next thing we talk about is our write path. So here I am, I'm a, a, um, a client and I wanna write some information. I wanna write the Jack of Spades. So here I have the jack of spades in my hand. The first thing I have to do as always is look for where the data should go. So, or which region it goes into. So here, obviously it's in the spades region. I go through and I, and I can go through and deal with that. And here I'm going to insert in my jack of, my jack of spades. You'll notice that I'm inserting it in sorted order so that what we did right there with the read path, I can go through and start reading that data. Here, let's do it again. So here, I'm gonna take the eight of clubs and, I'm and I want to insert that data. 
one of the interesting things about HBase is there's really no uh, inserts per se in the sense that we think of them in relational databases. You would think of this more as an upsert. So if there was already data here that was an eight of clubs, what it would happen was the data would go on top of that. It would be a brand new version. So that's something we haven't talked about, but HBase can also go into another dimension or version dimension. By default, it will create or keep three dimensions or three versions, three previous versions of this data. You could go back and look and see what did this eight of clubs look like a year ago or a few days ago and actually see what the data looked like at that time. Another interesting thing that can be done with the uh, HBase API is what's called scanning. And it comes as a result of what we can do since data is in sorted order. So what I could do is I could say, I wanna read every diamond together. And what I can do is since all that data is in a, in a region, I could start at the very first diamond and read all the way through the end in a very, very efficient way. Because as you remember, all of this data is stored together. So I could start right here at two, read, 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 all the way through to the ace. And that can all be done very efficiently because there doesn't, there doesn't have to be a bunch of syncs or a bunch of uh, hard drive reads as a result of that. By having things in sorted order, you can do various other interesting things, but that's outside the scope of this video. So I hope this gave you a, a very basic overview of HBase, and I inv invite you to watch the video again, grab yourself a, a deck of playing cards, and play along as I do this so that you can see how HBase works.